and this training bite is on class polymorphism in system Verilog. So this is the fifth in a series of training bites showing you how to use classes in system Verilog and in this bite we'll have a look at polymorphism covering concepts and also having a look at typecasting. So it's common for a parent class to have multiple subclasses. Here base frame has the subclasses of short frame, medium frame and long frame. And all these subclasses are doing is adding additional constraints for randomization. And remember in system Verilog, we're only allowed to have single inheritance. So each subclass can only extend from one parent. Now my problem is that each of these subclasses creates a new type and I want to quickly and easily change between these subclass types without having to rewrite my test bench. So if my test bench is written using base frame handles, I want to be able to switch to short frame instances without changing the handle types throughout the whole of my test bench. An object orientation has a solution to this, which is called polymorphism. And this states that if you have a handle of, for example, the base frame type, this can contain an instance of base frame or any subclass of base frame. So this introduces the concept that an object has a handle type. This was the type that was used in its declaration, but it can also have a contents type. So this handle can point to an area of memory that contains an instance of a subclass of base frame as well as base frame itself. Let's try and show you how this works. So here I have two classes, base frame and a subclass of base frame called short frame. Both of them have a simple function called IAM, which tells us which class they are, and also short frame has an additional property called S1. And I create two handles on base frame and short frame, and I create an instance of short frame in the handle SF by calling the constructor. Now what I can do is I can copy that short frame instance to the parent class handle. So you can always copy a subclass instance to a parent class handle. So now both handles are pointing to the same area of memory that contains a short frame instance. But if I call and access any methods or properties off the handle, these are resolved according to the handle type. So bf.iam returns the string base frame, even though it contains a short frame instance, we resolve any property or method access according to the handle type base frame. And indeed, if I try and access the property S1 of the BF handle, this fails. This gives me a compilation error. Even though I know there's a short frame instance in there, I can't access the properties of it of the base frame handle. So I guess the solution to this would be to copy the instance back into a short frame handle so we can access the original short frame properties. So we could do that. So here I have the classes, same as on the previous slide. I now have an additional handle on short frame SF2. I've created an instance in short frame SF1. I've copied that to the base frame handle BF. When I call BF.IAM, this is resolved according to the handle type, base frame type. So this tells me I'm a base frame. What I could do now is try and copy that base frame handle back to the short frame handle to recover the short frame instance. But I'm not allowed to do this directly. You cannot directly copy the base frame handle to the short frame handle. The problem is, is you are making an assumption that the base frame handle is pointing at a short frame instance. And that assumption could be wrong. You need to check the assumption. And we do this by calling a cast. So dollar cast copies the contents of BF1, the pointer from BF1, into SF2 and checks that that pointer is pointing at an instance in memory which is compatible with the short frame handle SF2. Basically checks that BF is pointing at a short frame instance. And if the cast succeeds, if that assumption is correct, I can now access the methods of the SF2 handle and this then tells me I'm a short frame. I've recovered the short frame instance out of the base frame handle. So let's try and show you an example for using this and also talk a bit more about the dollar cast. 
So let's have a look at the example first. I have a method up here. I have a function called getItem, which returns an argument of type base frame. And inside getItem, I'm calling a rand case to randomly select either a base frame instance or a short frame instance. If I create a short frame instance, I copy that to the base handle and I return the base handle. So now in my initial block down here, I call get item, I store the result of the get item call in the base frame handle bf which is compatible with the return type of the function and I'm now checking with a dollar cast here to see if that BF handle actually contains a short frame instance. If it does the cast will be true and I can display I got a short frame. Otherwise if the cast failed it means that there's not a short frame instance in that base frame handle. I created, I took the first branch of the RAND case and I created a base frame instance instead. So the cast, um, you call it dollar cast, you take the destination, the to handle as the first argument and the from, the source handle as the second argument. So it's an assignment and also a type check. Okay. Now this comes in two forms, both a function and a task form. On the previous slide we showed the task form, in this example we're using the function form because we're doing something with the return type of the cast. And generally speaking, you should use the function form of the cast. If the cast fails as a function, it returns a zero, you can do something with that value. If the task form of the cast fails, it's a runtime error with no recovery. So here's another example of polymorphism. So here I have an array frame of base frame handles, eight of them. And in an initial block, I call a for each on the frame. For every element of the frame array, I call rand case, and I randomly either generate a short frame instance or a medium frame instance, and copy that into the next element of the frame array. So we can load up this base frame array with different subclass instances and we can do this dynamically during the course of the simulation. It's sometimes called late binding. And the advantages of this is that the type of the frame is decided in one place in my initial block at the start of simulation during my stimulus. Uh, all subsequent references within my test bench can be to the frame array and if I want to add new subclasses to this test bench I can easily add new branches to the RAND case I make changes to one part of my code and I continue to use the frame instances in the rest of my test bench. So this gives you a quick overview of polymorphism. In the next training bite, we're going to have a look at virtual classes and virtual methods. And further bites in this series, we'll have a look at randomization and constraints.